All right, hello everyone. It's Adam here. I'm doing this um, <clears throat> this helmet cam thing again because everyone loved it so much the first time. So here we are. We are heading to uh, Lee, New Hampshire to go to a um, auto shop. Oh man, I really thought the sun was out of our eyes here. Sorry about that. Oh geez. Um, yeah, I'm, I have sunglasses on, so obviously it's not so bad for me, but you guys probably see nothing but lens flare. So, uh, I got this car in, on August 11th. It is now, um, I think it's September? I'm oh, sorry, October. <laughs> October 12th. So we've had this car for two months. Um, yeah, so it's been fun so far. I've definitely enjoyed the vehicle. We just hit uh, 3,600 miles, I believe. And uh, so far, there haven't really been any mechanical issues. Oh, at least not any that were, most of them, or all of them, were, uh, were self-inflicted mechanical issues. So I've done a ton of this car already. Uh, when you're driving it just normally, it looks pretty much... You know, my, my field of view here is pretty much just the paddle shifters and the uh, the blue spherical side mirrors and I guess the boost gauge. But really other than that, it's been pretty much unchanged uh, for the past two months in, in this area. Um, last week, I installed a three inch uh, catted downpipe and some pipes that go from the uh, turbo and the throttle to the... Uh, intercooler. I also installed uh, a new insert that stiffens up the, the movement of the engine. So it goes where the dog bone is and it stiffens up the engine motion going back and forth. Um, those are the big sort of performance modifications. I guess the intake sort of counts, but not, not really. Uh, and they really have, you know, all those combined, you know, it only added like 25 horsepower or so or 30 horsepower, something like that. But it really is noticeable. Most importantly in how the car responds to my um, throttle input, the way it holds. Oh, and also the upgraded diverter valve from Go Fast Bits, the DV Plus. So because of all those things together, it holds um, gears a bit longer. It spools up the turbo much quicker, and everything is just uh, a bit more responsive. Something that was unexpected is how much louder this thing is inside and outside. But um, I guess that was something you, if you add more power, you're going to add more noise. Um, so now I'm going down to Lee, New Hampshire to this place. Uh, United Motorsport offers a tune for my car. It's 2016 Golf R. The ECU doesn't have a metal lock over it like some of the 16s, but uh, most of the tuners can't flash uh, cars that are built after a certain date and I'm like three days after that date so United Motorsports the first place that offers a true tune not a piggyback that goes on to the uh, onto the ECU here they also offer a TCU tune which is the uh, the transmission control unit and basically this is the DSG the automatic transmission um, because what happens when you're adding so much more torque and so much more uh, basically boost pressure to this engine uh, you're going to get some clutch slippage in, in inside of um, um, launches, and just overall, it's it's best to do the ECU and TCU tune at the same time. Uh, also, United Motorsport will flash this uh, car, uh, just the ECU, but if you're going for the high torque file, uh, they won't do it unless you do the TCU tune, because with the high torque file, you're going to have some DSG problems on the road, and it's good to to do those at the same time. They don't offer a stage one, stage two, or stage three. It's basically, from what I hear, you go in there and you tell them you have an intake and a downpipe, and they go, oh, okay, we'll give you a file that takes advantage of those. Uh, it's not specifically called stage two, which is interesting. So, um, afterwards, if all goes well, I'm going to put this thing on there, the dyno that, that this shop has, and, and, and check the the power band and torque levels see how that goes uh one more thing i wanted to mention to them and i'll tell, tell you guys about is whenever i start the car up fresh in the morning 
um, I get, if I have the engine open, engine bay open, and I smell around where the turbo connects to the downpipe, uh, I get a little bit of a smell that would, I would, I would be reminiscent of a lawnmower engine. And I don't know if that's uh, was there before. I never smelled my turbo to downpipe connection uh, before I did the downpipe upgrade. So I don't really know if that, I gotta pass this guy. I don't really know if that's because of the the new downpipe or if maybe the clamp around the bottom of the downpipe isn't as tight as it should be. In which case, you know, that's not a good thing. I did, you know, after a hard run, my oil temperature on 230, 240, uh, or 235 roughly, and I opened the engine bay. It was very cool in there. It wasn't warm at all in there. Um, so there's plenty of air that's pushing out all the heat that's doing the, the downpipe. Uh, on top of that, when I am pushing down the throttle and launching or going fast, or whatever, um, I don't smell any of the same stuff. I even don't smell that stuff after the car has up is up and running. Once the car is like, you know, idling at normal normal RPMs, I don't smell that smell anymore. And finally, my coolant and my oil temps are completely normal. And the last thing we've done is I I put a piece of paper in the engine bay and put it on various sides and underneath and behind <coughs> the downpipe and there's there appears to be no uh, exhaust pushing around so maybe it's just a smell that's normal when you first boot up the engine uh, but it's something that's concerning so I thought I'd ask these guys just to take a look at my my craftsmanship before we do the tune and then we'll do a dyno run and then I'm done that's the plan so as for next steps with this car, uh, well, next next big purchase will be we're ordering uh, winter wheels and winter tire tires because uh, it is going to get cold here pretty soon. You know, by by the 15th of November, there'll be a high risk for snow and ice and all kinds of crap on the roads. So that'll be a good thing to get done. I'm going to go with 18s on the wheels as opposed to the 19 stocks so I get a bit more grip uh, the caddies wheels one of them actually has scratched and dented a little bit from a I curbed it going out of a grocery store so the rear passenger wheel has a big chunk out of the edge of the, the frame there it's not at risk for being you know destroyed but it is ugly so over the winter time I'll be repairing that wheel I'm actually thinking of even powder coating all four of the wheels to be black or you know, change up the design of it without having to buy new wheels yet. Uh, I do think I'm going to ditch these tires though next summer and go with the uh, the Michelin Pilot Super Sports, the ones that are uh, you know performance summer, not the ones that are for uh, track use. Uh, just because I had those on my last car and they were really great, and, and I'd, I'd like to get back into that that feeling on a tire. These 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 summer tires that come on the Golf R are just not exciting at all. Uh, they're not very stiff. They they are uh, you, you feel it. You feel how, how how squishy they are when you're around corners. So I'm about to fix that. Winter mods though going forward maybe a radar detector once the, the blend tech mount comes out where the blender detector comes here. Uh, the dash cam's working great. It's up here and I've got the rear camera as well hooked up and uh, maybe some engine bay modifications like just some new caps some maybe some some color some different pipes but for the most part nothing too extreme under the engine next year i want to upgrade the intercooler to allow a bit more uh airflow and and, and temperature uh dissip dissipation uh I don't foresee doing anything major to the engine though as far as performance after today. This is pretty much how it's going to be except for just letting it breathe more with the intercooler and maybe bigger pipes, but that, that's it. Uh, interior, not much going on here. Uh, yeah, the car is pretty much close to what it's going to be uh, permanently. You know, I just hope that all I'm doing to the engine doesn't lead to uh, mechanical repairs 
And at this point with the downpipe installed, I basically have nullified my engine warranty after 3,000 miles, which is very irresponsible. Uh, but it's just a, it's a calculated risk. You gotta have enough money to cover basically replacing a turbo or, you know, basically have about two grand sitting around. That's <clears throat> basically just gonna go to getting the damn, th damn thing repaired if it, if it does blow up. So maybe if I'm, uh, maybe I'll do a, a quick pull here. I wish I'd done it back there when I wasn't near all these, these people. But uh, maybe a quick pull would be fun to check out how this thing drives now. Explain this notchiness. So we're 20 right now. 15. Currently in third. I don't know if you heard that or not. It's like a, uh, I'm in first, second, I come to a complete stop. It's, uh, the gear shifting is a little bit harsh, I guess is the best way to put it. So when you hear this, when I get on a 5,500 RPM mark or 6,000 or so. Actually happened a little bit earlier that time. Sorry, my video skills aren't that good. We're still in third. Well, now we're in third. Going uh, 35 miles an hour. Approaching the interstate here. We're gonna, I'm gonna floor it. I think this will be the right angle. So we're gonna do a couple of pulls here. I'm gonna go into manual. We're in first gear. Oil temps 216. AC is off, radio is off. I've got, uh, I'm gonna put both windows down here just to give it a bit more outside noise. So what I'm getting is in the hard pulls, I'm getting like this, uh, this rumble, you know, kind of where the transmission is. So I'm not quite sure what's causing that, but it's, it's definitely making the RPMs basically not fully, you know, they're, they're kind of stopping dead for a second and then it's figuring itself out and keep going. And I don't know what kind of damage it's causing to have that kind of situation. I know the camera is not perfect, but I hope this all helps. This is a small back road. No one's on it. I'm just gonna take off here. Good launch. That was just fine. There was no issue there. It's really when I get into those higher ranges there, which might be really difficult on this road. Um, I usually don't exceed 40 or so, 45 or 40. Uh, I don't know if that was visualized in the thing here. Let's come to a complete stop, actually. I don't think there's anyone behind me here. I won't be launching. I'll just launch, you know, in sport mode. But I'm not going to actually use launch control. All right. Two, three. Absolutely fine. So uh, I'm mostly doing this video for my own reference, so later on I can watch the video back and make sure that it uh, it looks normal. So thanks for watching.